Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Global Dream Church. My name is Bethel. I'm very pleased to meet all of you here today. Now, there are some members uh, visiting Korea for the first time, I think, and then some of the new faces here. And welcome to Korea. Welcome to GDC. Um, why don't we greet each other with five miracle expressions of GDC? It's written in English and Korean, and we do with my sign language. So I hope you can follow it together. Thank you. Thank you. 감사합니다. Bless you. Bless you. 축복합니다. <laughs> Love you. you. 사랑합니다. All is well. 잘될 거예요. We will overcome. 승리하세요. I hope you do 승리하세요 this week. <laughs> Um, the passage I'd like to share with you today is 2 Chronicles thir um, 34, 26 to 31. And um, the title is Josiah's, let me, let me check, sorry. Yeah, I think I got the wrong, okay. Josiah's path to spiritual renewal. So why don't we check the passage video and come back. Tell the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive, and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people, and because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Now I will gather you to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I am going to bring on this place and on those who live here. So they took her answer back to the king. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people from the least to the greatest, he read in their hearing all the words of the Book of the Covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord, to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, and to obey the words of the covenant written in this book. Well, as you see that it's already June, um, this month marks the halfway point of the year 2024. The time flies, right? And reflecting on today's scripture, I consider what we should prepare for, for us as we look to the future. And today's scripture centers around Josiah. And she King Josiah along with Jehoshaphat and Hezekiah is respected as one of the great and godly kings of Judah. Although he became king at the age, very young age of eight, he, along with his officials, carried out a significant spiritual reform. So 2 Chronicles 34, verse 3 to 4, it says, In the eighth year of his reign, so it means he was 15, 16, right? While he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. In his 12th year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Asher poles, and idols. Under his direction, the altars of the Baals were torn down. He cut to pieces the incense altars that were above them and smashed the Asher poles and the idols. These he broke to pieces and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. It's a little bit scary, yeah. But this religious spiritual reform involved gathering and destroying all the foreign gods that the people worshipped at that time. It was an extreme reform that no other king had accomplished, and Josiah carried it out boldly. 
Additionally, he commanded the neglected temple to be repaired. So during the repairs, the high priest discovered the long forgotten book of the law of God. Upon reading this book, King Josiah led a spiritual awakening movement to rebuild the kingdom according to the words of the book. So in verse 21, King Josiah commands, Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the remnant in Israel and Judah about what's written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that's poured out in us because those who have gone before us have not kept the word of the Lord. They've not acted in accordance with all that is written in this book. So while reading the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses, Josiah realized that the suffering of their nation was not due to a lack of effort or a weak national power. He actually realized that the suffering was because they had lived apart from God. So to renew this nation, he understood that the spirituality of all the people had to be restored. And this realization is akin to the biblical principle, as your soul prospers, so shall you prosper in all things. Amen. So we often prioritize urgent matters and live according to our daily needs without maintaining the health of our souls. I realize that to enjoy the blessing of the new future that God has prepared for us, our souls must be properly established before God. So to prepare for the new future that God is about to begin, there's an important task we must undertake. So the first one I want to share with you today is we must rend the garments of our hearts. In 2 Chronicles 34, verse 15 and 19, I will read it for you in NLT version. Hilkiah said to Shaphan, the court secretary, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Then Hilkiah gave the scroll to Shaphan. When the king heard what was written in the law, he tore his clothes in despair. So when Josiah heard the word, he contemplated the fundamental reason for Israel's past suffering. He realized that they had not stood rightly before God. So he tore his clothes and wept in repentance. Well, actually, when I was reading this verse, it didn't really get me in reality. So what does the re what's the reason he's tearing his clothes? And I got to think about it. And lastly, like, I have a daughter. She's in first grade of middle school. And, um, you know, in Korea, when you enter middle school, that's the time you start taking tests, which are very much related to the records of your life. Right? So she's pretty much in uh, stress. Uh, even though she doesn't study that much, like, you know, in, m in my perspective, I'm a parent, but, like, she was at home, and, yeah, she was just complaining, complaining about the school and things and records and things, and, and um, she was actually telling me, Mom, like, there are so many extra tests I need to prepare for, and for one subject, they have, like, three or four tests, and I'm so stressed, and I have five more next week going on and on. So in the end, her conclusion was, Mom, I'm going to rip all the papers that I have, you know, submitted to the teachers when I get, get it back. And I said, like, well, maybe you might need it when you want to enter the college. They, they want their record. And then she says, well, then when after I enter the college, I'm going to rip everything away. I said, all right, <laughs> Yeah, okay, <laughs> well, that's up to you. And, and her stress was so, like, extreme. I told her, well, well Lily, I, kn I know you can't rip all the records right now, but do you want to rip the newspapers? They're there, you know. Uh, I don't read it, so I don't mind if you want to rip it and just, you know, take it to the trash can or whatever. And she started ripping the newspapers. And um, the next day, yeah, early in the morning, I I woke up and meditating the message again, and 
um, her action of ripping the newspapers and she said like, mom, I'm not going to study anymore after I finish graduating university. I'm going to do something. You never need exam anymore. I'm not going to do it. This is not right. And you know, her strong decision, I'm not gonna be a lawyer or I'm not gonna be something, something that needs extra exams. And she was ripping the newspapers and that image of her that really reminded me of, okay, tearing the robes. Is that something that you really, you know, showing your strong decision, like the hatred of yourself, your sin inside you, and you not want to go back to yourself again? Isn't that really a strong decision of yourself showing God that I won't do this again in my life again like that? And her action, like thankfully, that was really connected with the message today. And yeah, now I got the image of tearing the robes. That's actually the act of signifying repentance. I'm not going to go to the same point ever, never, never again. So to prepare for a new future, we must reflect in our lives where we claim to serve God, but in reality, serve ourselves more and rend the garments of our hearts. So our faith and spirituality must be restored for a new future to open up in our lives. And this is why the Lord speaks through the prophet Joel. Let's see Joel 2, 13 to 14. It says, rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. So he tells us to rend our hearts, not our garments, and return to God. Well, some of us might wonder why, despite diligently living out our faith, we do not see God's blessings. We do not see what we want. However, we should consider if we are hindering the blessings that God is already giving us. It's not that God's not giving us opportunities. Rather, we're not prepared for them. The sad reality is that we're unprepared. God is not someone who simply gives better things than before. He's actually someone who gives us new blessings and a new future. Therefore, we must rend the hardened, prideful garments of our hearts and come before God. In reality, King Josiah, who appears in today's scripture, was not an evil person who needed to repent by tearing his clothes. He was an excellent king who led spiritual awakening and religious reform. So why did he tear his clothes? That was my question. After hearing God's word, Josiah reflected on his own shortcomings in serving God fully and wept. Even though we think we're doing okay, you know, when we stand in front of God, sometimes we read the passage or listen to random sermons. We get to realize, okay, I thought I was doing okay, but see myself? All right. This is who I am. And I go back to God and ask for help. In the Old Testament, the word for repentance is shuv, which means to turn back from the path you were going according to your own thoughts. 2 Chronicles 34, 27 says, because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before God, when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people, and because you humble yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I, God, have heard you, declares the Lord. So we should see clear reasons 
why God is listening to Josiah. They're too big because. And when we deny that in our heart and try to follow Josiah's way, I believe God will open the future for us. And after discovering the book of the law, Josiah repented and wept for not having followed its commands. When Josiah wholeheartedly accepted and served God's word, God responded to him sincerely. So in Chronicles, this is actually our last week of Chronicles. And the mainstream of Chronicles is that we repeatedly see that God turns back when humans recognize their evil and repent. He's not the one saying, you did this and that and that and that in the past. So even though you say, forgive me, no, that's not the God in Chronicles. So we hope to seek God with all our hearts. God knows our hearts. When we have the determination to follow God wholeheartedly, I believe that the God who loves us more than we love ourselves will work all things together for good. And to prepare for the new future that God is about to begin, the second task we must undertake is we must make a resolution of faith. So when Josiah discovered the book of the law, he did not merely read it. He resolved to serve God with all his life. So this is more related to the action, not about what we know, right? So after finding the book of the law, he sent people to the prophetess Huldah to ask how he could better serve God. But unfortunately, Huldah responded with the following. In True Chronicles 34, 24 to 25 says, this is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and this people. All the curses written in the book that has been read in the presence of the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods. Aroused my anger by all that their hands have made. My anger will be poured out in this place and will not be quenched. Lord said, Josiah made efforts to conduct religious reforms and stand rightly before God. Rather than being discouraged by Huldah's words, Josiah continued his religious reforms. This is the key of Josiah. Sometimes we open the Bible, and I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I read the Bible and feel, oh my, feel so guilty. Or something happened in the past just comes back to me. Okay, I'm a big sinner. But see, Josiah, rather than being discouraged by Huldah's words, Josiah continued his religious reforms. He did what he needs to do. He did what is right in front of God. And King Josiah celebrated the Passover according to the word of God, which had not been observed during the times of the judges or the kings of Israel and Judah. Josiah resolved to, be, to live according to the word and made efforts to establish that resolution. So the Bible states in 2 Kings 23, 22 to 23, it says, neither in the days of the judges who led Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah had any such Passover being observed. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. So see how the way Bible is written. I can see how much God was touched by the Passover Josiah had prepared. Josiah resolved to live according to the word and implemented that resolution. Many believers stop at merely hearing the word. That's me, honestly. I like to hear. I'm being curious. I want to check the reason. I want to see how Bible is written. That's my interest. But when I read the Bible, keep reading it, it's asking me to act differently. 
And that's totally different part of the story. It's really hard to say yes and move forward. However, like Josiah, we must resolve to live by faith and strive to do so to prepare for the new future that God has in store for us. Of course, making a resolution of faith is not easy. However, God's will should come before our own, God's plan before our own, God's grace before our own assertions. When we decide to live for the God who cares for us, more than we care for ourselves, we can enjoy the blessings that God has prepared for us. Amen. And the Bible evaluates King Josiah as follows. In 2 Kings 22, 2 says, He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. The Bible records that Josiah lived as God desired. If we live according to our desires, there will be no transformation in our lives. Instead of living as we wish, we must live as God desires. And May is over, you know. In June, marking the halfway point of 2024 has begun. So what are you placing your hope in your life? Let us remember that only God, who loved us and sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth, is our hope. Therefore, the Bible says that apart from God, we can do nothing. I had a hard time witnessing this. I thought, I can do it. All right, God. Well, you can just help me. I'll do it. All right. Well, that was my whole story of my life. But when I started accepting, okay, I can do nothing. So you do it for me. Just help me. And that was the starting point. He started working in my life. So let us thank God for guiding us this far. And look to the God who will take responsibility for us to the end. I pray that today will be a day when we set our hearts and our faith in God. So as we pray for a short time, I hope you remember the messages of today and think about your week, think about your past or whatever that just gets on your heart and mind and ask for his help, ask for his guidance and believe and stay in the hope and faith in God. Let's pray together.